Hey, what's going on everybody? I'm back with another video and in this video I wanted to kind of put my two cents in lately about all these rumors going around again about how the NX could be a hybrid system or a system that is functional as a portable device and something that streams to your TV. Um, all these patents going around have led people to believe going down this path yet again so I'm going to give you my opinion on it, and then I'm going to give you some information that I researched uh, just recently, actually, about why I think that Nintendo is definitely not going this route. But they do have a solution, quite possibly, uh, to make the portable aspect something that doesn't take away from the power of the console itself. So, first of all, my opinion is that the NX is a home console. As just like what the Wall Street Journal said, the NX is a home console with some type of portable aspect to it, and that it has industry leading chips, which means the latest graphics technology, the latest in chip technology. And the rumor has been since 2015 that they're using AMD graphics uh, technology for their console. Various, 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 uh, numerous instances have reported this on the on the internet and um, even if you put you know all the things together with their graphics card design wins over the past few years it all lines up with AMD as I've stated many times now also Nintendo themselves it's been noted quite publicly that they have gone uh, to third parties and talked to them behind closed doors asking them what they would like in a next generation console because they left the Wii U, right? They didn't support the Wii U. They complained about the architecture and they complained about the, of course, CPU of it and the lack of power, all those things uh, they were complaining about. And of course, when the sales didn't match up, they left the console and basically made games for their systems. So Nintendo has been publicly, even themselves have stated that they went to third parties and have asked them what they would want for the Nintendo NX or their next generation console. So putting these things together, what do you think, dear listener, that they said? And <laughs> Do you really think that third parties told Nintendo, hey, we want a hybrid system. We want a system based on ARM architecture and we want a system that is low powered and we want a system that basically doesn't do what the other systems do. <laughs> Now, granted, that would be the mindset of the old Nintendo, right? But if Nintendo is trying to change and listen to these developers, as they have said and stated even recently at E3, they want to make a system that is easy to develop for for third parties, they would have listened to them, meaning that they would make the system powerful, they would make the system have an architecture that is easy to port to, they would make a system that has third-party support due to this, basically. They would want to get that support back they would make a system that has online capabilities so but then the question comes in well how would they do that you know because the japanese market of course they really are into those handhelds so how would they make it um a system that is for everybody basically that make a system that is happy you know happy living for everybody to enjoy since Nintendo can't put a half step into one thing and a half step into another thing, it just doesn't work. The Wii U was kind of like that. It was a half step into, you know, next generation gaming, but it was also not a full step because it was taking something away by making the gamepad such a focus, putting so much effort and money and R&D costs into that gamepad. The features were just convoluted and were never used to the full effect. So they can't do that with the NX. So a lot of people think they're going to do something like that. When I say like that, make it a hybrid. Make it something that is portable and can play on your TV. So obviously, if it's portable and can play on your TV, it's not going to have the power that is needed to compete with PlayStation 4, even the regular PlayStation 4, much less the Neo, for, uh, for example. So I did some research, and I came across some very interesting information on streaming technology that could quite possibly be embedded into the graphics hardware of the NX with the uh, Polaris graphics architecture. Now, take a look at this video I'm going to play for you right now. Yeah, well, it's a couple things. Uh, we define Polaris as uh, FinFET, the brand new um, process technology for manufacturing a graphics chip. Uh, and that's 14 nanometer FinFET. It's uh, a huge improvement over the 28 nanometer graphics cards available today. Uh, we've also iterated Graphics Core Next, so now we have the fourth generation Graphics Core Next architecture. We've done some pretty major improvements to geometry and shading efficiency. Uh, we'll talk more about that 
later in 2016. Uh, for people who enjoy game streaming, we've got H.265, 10-bit encode and decode support all the way up to 4K. So the very latest ENCODE decode technologies uh, for watching video and for streaming video. Uh, we also have support for HDMI 2.0a, which should bring 4K 60Hz support or 4K HDR, uh, which is a brand new TV spec and monitor spec. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, and we also have DisplayPort 1.3, which will make 120Hz 4K possible or 240Hz 1440p. And all of that stuff would be compatible with AMD FreeSync technology. So if you care about video quality, power efficiency, rendering performance, uh, display technology, there's something new in every category. Uh, for people who enjoy game streaming, we've got H.265, 10-bit encode and decode support all the way up to 4K. So here we have the representative from AMD describing that the Polaris GPU from AMD will be capable of many, many different things. And one of them was H.265 uh, encoding for video streaming, basically, and saying that if you like streaming, this graphics card is for you. So this technology is gonna be embedded in the, you know, supposed, we're speculating, the graphics card of the Nintendo One X. Keep in mind that the PlayStation 4 does game streaming to the PlayStation Vita, as in remote play, for example. However, the remote play for the PlayStation 4 is using H.264, which is the generation behind the H.265. And the big deal about this is that the H.264 does not encode or stream uh, data files as small as the H.265 does. The H.265 is the next generation in encoding because it reduces the file size by compressing high definition sources into about 50% smaller the size than H.264. And what that means is, is that streaming to your console or, or from your console to your handheld device or controller with a screen on it, for example, could be done uh, a lot faster and with a lot less being needed to be streamed basically because the encoder would make it smaller, make the file size a lot smaller, but the quality would still be there. Is that starting to make sense to you guys? So since PlayStation 4 does it uh, pretty good with the PlayStation Vita, there's not that much lag uh, with playing remote play from PlayStation Vita uh, from the PlayStation 4 console from your home. Nintendo could theoretically perfect this with the NX and its controller with a screen on it it could have, theoretically, the H.265 encoding and decoding technology built inside the controller and the console, of course, in the graphics card, the Polaris, and have it be able to stream from your home directly to your controller via Wi-Fi and the H.265 decoder. Keep in mind that this is not, I repeat, not a game streaming service. So we talked about this before that, um, Nintendo, there was speculation that Nintendo would invest in some big, gigantic streaming uh, game servers for all, all these servers and full games being downloaded right to your, your handheld or whatever like that. This is not that. What we're talking about here is a peer-to-peer -peer connection from directly from your home connection from your console directly to your handheld device. I'm not talking about streaming an entire game from scratch from some server somewhere. That would be a completely different story. This would be your own network at home locally that you could stream peer-to-peer -peer from your console to your uh, handheld device. Now, how Nintendo would do that, there's there's many different ways they could do that, but for example, Mario Kart 8, that's a peer-to-peer -peer game. So you're playing peer-to-peer -peer with other players worldwide. You're connecting with them directly and playing Mario Kart 8. They could do something similar with that with the NX and streaming from your home console to the handheld device or controller with a screen on it. Now, basically, they could set up a server where you log in and it sends your signal via Wi-Fi to that server and bounces it back to your home network. So you, basically, you're getting a two-step right to your home network, almost a direct connection, basically. So it would be really close to lag-free because you're getting a direct connection, basically, right to your home network. There's no, you know, trying to go through some online service where there could be, you know, lag and there could be some kind of interference. You're getting a direct connection to your home, depending on your internet speed. 
Now that's where H.265 comes in because then if the files are small enough, the encoding that needs to be done would not be very hard and the transferring of those files to your device would be a lot smaller than H.264, which basically means you'll get a lot less lag and you'll get higher quality visuals on that screen. There's been rumors that the screen was maybe a 540p, like a PlayStation Vita size screen. That would be absolutely perfect to receive data from an H.265 decoder because it would decode it so fast and so small that the lag would be very, very minimal. And not only that, but the cost for Nintendo to manage a server that just bounces your signal to back to your home signal uh, would be minimal at, at the most. It wouldn't cost them very much at all. So theoretically, Nintendo could offer that service for free and make up the cost with software and programs and, and DLC and hardware, of course. So theoretically, Nintendo could solve the quote-unquote hybrid issue that you guys are so much in question or doubt about with this technology that AMD has built into the Polaris graphics card. This to me makes way more sense than having the hardware built inside of the handheld device to take with you. Granted, Nintendo will come out most likely with its own dedicated handheld device later, but in regards to getting AAA experiences on the go, I think this is a really, really great idea that Nintendo could do, and it makes perfect sense, and it doesn't in any way at all take away the power of the home console or sacrifice it. So you still get all the power you want from that home console, and you get to stream it almost lag free to your handheld device. Now that screen on the controller, uh, it would probably just be a screen. It would basically be a controller with a screen on it. It wouldn't be touch screens. Obviously, what would you do with a touch screen if you're streaming something from your TV to your, to your game? Uh, it'll probably not have any touch screen functionality if it's just streaming to your controller. It'd be like playing the game on your TV, but in your hands basically. So the screen would be inexpensive, some LCD screen, and the technology inside the controller would be inexpensive. It would be H.265 decoder and Wi-Fi, basically. So theoretically, putting all this together, it doesn't seem like it would cost Nintendo very much money to do that. That is why it would be something different completely than a dedicated handheld device. So Nintendo's dedicated handheld device that will probably come at a later time, would probably have all that nice touchscreen stuff on it, you know, multi-touch and whatever innovations they want to put on there. But for the home console, I think that this is what they can do without sacrificing the power and it makes perfect sense and it's an easy, easy setup that they could do for everybody to enjoy. Now, for the final secret of the NX, I don't think that is it, obviously, because it was already reported on multiple times by the Wall Street Journal and other uh, publications have said that the NX will have some kind of portable element to it. So I highly doubt that that is the secret because Remote play has been done before by PlayStation Vita and PlayStation 4, so I highly, highly doubt that remote play is the final secret. But I do think they'll take advantage of that better technology that's available to them for remote play to be seamless. So I think this is a great idea for Nintendo to do, but the secret of the NX I still think is a secret. So stay tuned to find out what that is, because I don't know, we don't know, but we're dying to find out. All right, guys, so if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, subscribe, and leave me a comment, and we'll talk to you very soon in the next video. Take care.